it is your buddy, peace and harmony with you here today. Much love going out to all the beautiful empowered harmonizers. We are zooming in and focusing in a little bit more in depth in terms of understanding how to pull back and withdraw from the perhaps emotional habits, emotional bad habits that you have experienced while being in a relationship with someone who is toxic narcissistic or psychopathic someone who has really put the brunt of the relationship issues onto you feeling that it's all your fault you're too needy you're too demanding you know there's a, a real arrow that's pointing at you and they're basically pay, playing the, the blame game and perhaps maybe you bought into this in the beginning um, and tried to change yourself to people please and what I would say calling into other esteem, meaning you're not really esteeming yourself. Others become more important than you. And then relationships in life can become very imbalanced. Very imbalanced meaning that it's there's an external locus of control, which means it's disempowering you. Prana, baby. Uh, sorry about that. Um, and uh, either... Um, other esteem, meaning there's an external locus of control. And you're, it's, there's, the change is not coming from within, like you're owning it. The change is coming from without in order to people please because of it. And oftentimes the relationship dynamics and movements get caught up in that and really become a bad emotional habit like smoking or drinking or overeating, what have you, that keeps it in a perpetual cycle. So, um, when we talk about, um, really, you know, how do you release this and how do you move forward from it? It's to be able to pull back and realize that a narcissist, um, will not express their own fallible, their own mistakes. And oftentimes it'll rub off on other people which means either they, they then feel that they're the one who is carrying the whole brunt load of the family or the relationship or what have you. They're putting it all in their wagon and they are burdened by a tremendous sense of guilt or shame or fear, meaning they're in the fight or flight. There's this uncertainty that danger is you know, on its way, that there's a sense of doom, there's a, a sense of trouble. There is something that needs to be handled and dealt with. Um, and this very much becomes an overwhelming state. This really is, I've, the foundation of this is that external locus of control and feeling a degree of learned helplessness that you haven't been able to be an energetic match towards somebody who is either not accountable, um, who feels that they are above it, you know, accountability, um, because of an entitlement issue, because whatever chemistry that is going on in their mind, they're feeling that they don't have to change or that they're okay with the perception that, you know, you are not enough for me. It's, you know, and they might become very testy. Um, you know, well, then why don't you cook me a better meal? Well, then why don't you plan a better vacation? Why don't you work out the finances better? Why don't you tell me a better bedtime story? Why don't you, you know, get a better job? You know, you don't make enough for me or whatever all the tit for tat where it's really that uh, that other person oftentimes is then projecting that what they don't possess and they project it onto another as if they don't possess. Do you see what I'm saying? They don't own it. So there, there's a, an energetic transference of that energy onto another and then it becomes a real cognitive dissonance issue where something isn't quite making sense but you're trying to move forward to rectify the unbalance. Life is happier when it's in a state of balance meaning work and relaxation you know indulgence and then working you know that that give and take so that things are balanced um, and oftentimes the narcissist, if they are short on supply, you're going to get this disruption in the relationships. They're going to start the complaining. They're going to start the targeting. They're going to start those little elements of, you know, the disappearing, 
Um, they're not texting, you know, they might ask you to give them, you know, scratch my, my back even longer, um, etc. They're going to ask more out of you to the point of depletion. This then becomes other esteem, an external locus of control, meaning part of you feels that all you have to do is give and give and give, and that should be enough glue to keep the bond together. But to take stock is to understand where is the bond and to what degree are you too much of the glue trying to keep things forward um, and you know getting through that as a chaos um, become aware of the fact that it's okay for you to value yourself despite the fact that you might ha not have had validation from this person for quite some time or ever perhaps in the love bombing stage um, you felt that and it satisfied a need but as relationships move forward with these types of individuals, there's oftentimes an imbalance that becomes the new balance, if you will. You overgiving, over obligating, subconsciously or silently, you know, suffering, not being able to keep communication lines open, not being able to have input or contribution, or not allowing your talents to be expressed. You know, this if it's you know, if someone's gonna have talent in the relationship. It's going to be this other person because you're so much more talented and you're the king, of, you know, you're the one in the band, you're the one in the office, you're, you know, there, there can be the propping up of the ego and then the relationship becomes nothing but an ego, um, you know, an ego battle of egos. In other words, as long as I, um, you know, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, um, prop up your ego or stroke your ego, you know, the relationship then continues to the degree that narcissists need this is the degree to which the narcissist needs this. Oftentimes they really will keep those people who ego stroke them around quite a bit. Even if it means not reflecting back to you and allowing you to shine, that is the problem. And it becomes known as other esteem or external locus of control. These are one of the first concepts that I ever studied. Well, not one of the first, but into two or three years, um, or maybe my first year in university. Yeah, first year, or maybe second year, you know, they discuss in your psychology, internal versus external locus of control and how important it is to understand that and really how it plays out, not only in relationships, not only in family settings, but in work, in finances, in your eating, your consumption behaviors, your production behaviors, you know, what you really do and what you really experience, what you really have and where you really go can oftentimes be determined by an internal or external locus of control. So oftentimes people are molded and shaped, conditioned and programmed to stroke the ego of this narcissist, particularly, you know, when this person entered into their life, it becomes the bond, it becomes the glue. And this can then become a bad habit. It's like hanging around the wrong crowd, the, you know, the kids who drink, drug, whatever it is, gamble, um, you know, a bad influence. This person, even though despite they can be very successful in certain ways. They can also become a bad influence. This becomes very difficult to then um, sort of compute. Um, this becomes very difficult to comprehend. It becomes difficult to digest, you know, this, um, this sort of uh, disparaging um, values. You know, it's like the jumbo shrimp. It's like the icy cold. It's, you know, um, it's this, this, this contradiction, which becomes difficult to sort out. Um, in other words, valuing yourself for what you give to others, but you don't receive in return. And it's very important then because people who have been programmed and conditioned again and again and again, who then are lacking that, that, um, esteem of inside versus other esteem, meaning knowing that they are a person of value, feeling it, knowing it, and not feeling guilty, shy, embarrassed, or that they're gloating about themselves or being narcissistic or propping themselves up. Oftentimes, when people get to this state, it's very difficult to receive compliments. 
You look nice today. Good job. You're such a wonderful teacher. You're such a wonderful mother. You're such a wonderful guide. You really have a wonderful heart. You are so talented. You're in great shape. You are okay. You're okay just right now. You know, oftentimes those people, it does not hit home. It does not sink in. It does not resonate. It is not meaningful. It does, it is not remembered because it is not housed. It is not received. It is not put into what I would call um, that jar of self-trust, um, that jar of, um, you know, just a, a, a jar of self-confidence, meaning you've given away all of your power so that your internal value, you don't have that little in tip jar anymore. You, you haven't built up that sense of value of self. You don't feel it, live it. It does not feel like, it just feels a vapid emptiness. And there's a very easy answer, and that is because it is based on other esteem versus self-esteem. Self-esteem, for a lot of people who have been in, you know, um, less than nurturing relationships, it becomes a big no-no to listen to yourself. It becomes a big no-no to receive a compliment. It becomes a real no-no to be happy, joyful, and feel pleasure about yourself. And I think in a lot of cultures, this can also become a big problem where your own success, your own happiness, because it's a threat, because of these other individuals who are, want to have power over others, who have an insatiable need to control over others and have an insatiable need to have power over others and to be better than, you might not own that same drive. Understand it's a completely different drive than what you might know in life. So you might not be from that cut from that same cloth. You might not be wired that same way. It's to understand that there are aberrant and abnormal, you know, personality developments that occur. It doesn't mean that they're all, you know, in, um, you know, a, uh, you know, a, uh, a, uh, um, what am I saying? You know, it, it doesn't mean, you know, a lot of people think that, um, you know, these types of people are in an institution or something. It's to understand that these people are functional, just like you have functional alcoholics, functional drug addicts, you know, there's functional pathological liars, there's functional antisocial, you know, individuals um, who have deep pathologies, but who make it very well in life. And you might have some of these people close, and you might have brush up with these people in your life experience, you know, and it's a real important thing that you prioritize and understand what is the lesson learned and to understand that in divine order, that divine order is working in your life. If you're at kind of a crossroads and having to study is to understand that this person is in your life for a reason. <clears throat> Period. End of story. The divine is at work. The divine is at work. If you have a difficulty acknowledging and validating that, then part of your humbleness and your humility and healing might be set back. You know, it might not being able to really, you know, live in that the recovery and heal from this understanding and to get the lesson and the message that you need from your life experience. And that is to understand how other esteem can throw people off. People pleasing, you know, um, everything, you know, is about the superficial, you know, oh, look at my car. What a great house. What great curb appeal. You know, even though it might not suit their needs, it's freezing. The water doesn't work, you know, but it has great appeal. In other words, it's for the outer only. This can become a very, you know, rat race sort of feeling of life. And it's going to eventually wear off the you know, um, eventually it will become unfulfilling. It, life really, happiness is an internal job. Happiness comes from within. The Beatles, money can't buy me love. You know, well, tell that to somebody who doesn't have money to pay their heating bill and then they finally get enough money to pay their heating and then they're loving it and they experience love and internal value, you know, 
there's all sorts of tenets to these things, but why, you know, um, you know, you know, all, there's just so much in society that reinforces perhaps this people pleasing your family, your job, and you might feel like a black sheep different. I don't fit in. I'm isolated. Um, and it's to understand that, you know, you are different and that is okay. You are beautiful and magnificent and in divine order the way that you are. There is a lesson to be learned. What goes around comes around. And so allow the universe to handle this other person and their aberrant behavior. Don't feel that you have to be responsible for their happiness, their evolution, their healing. Because if that has to be in, you have to own it and possess it within. And then eventually you'll be able to attract that same positive respect and others who then value you and you can receive the compliments because you're on that wavelength of valuing yourself. You'll then be able to receive like a sponge the experiences, the people, the situations that go to give you the nurturing, the care, you know, the hands-on love that you need. But you need to understand that you must develop that self-esteem and how, what it feels like, self-respect. I'm no longer going to tolerate this behavior. This is not funny. I'm not playing this game. This is silly. This is moronic. This is stupid. I am, you know, not, you know, I am not going that direction anymore. I've decided to go a new direction. I mean, literally, that's what it is. It is, you know, um, saying I'm letting this narcissist off the hook. I'm giving them the pink slip. I'm letting this psychopath go. I'm giving them, you know, the termination notice. You know, it's to part ways, um, go a different direction. Life happens. Is oftentimes people have a very difficult time accepting this because they've so become so invested in this other person. I've, you know, money, time, um, dedication, all these different things that you gave to this individual. Do not feel at a loss. Do not feel as a defeat. Do not feel as a victim. This is part of divine order. It's all going to then come back and help you to see your strength and security and serenity and what self-esteem feels like. But you have to give it to yourself and you have to then also have that self-talk, which is reinforcing, I value myself. I am a person of value. I value myself. I am a person of value. In divine order, that value is huge. That value is magnificent. That value is contributory to the world at large and it will transfer on to other people and other generations. And that is where my core is. You have to understand that truth. You know, there's, there's, you know, um, that movie that comes around the holidays, It's a Wonderful Life. You know, you never know the degree to which you have helped others and been a positive influencer. You know, like the, the Van Goghs, you know, who never thought he had a talent and now his paintings are there for millions, you know, it's people sometimes don't ever get how good they are. Be one of the people who gets how good they are. Not that you're walking around like a, a pompous prick or something, um, but that know that you are a person of value. You are a person of credibility. You are a person of honesty and integrity. You are a person of heart. You are a person with abilities, talents that are unique and ingrained to you and own that and express it and expand on that and be able to give yourself that pat on the back. You know, give yourself literally a pat on the back, literally be there for yourself. That is where that internal relationship really needs to become tightly knit and, you know, you need to stop yourself in those moments and catch yourself Hey, I've got, I've got myself here. I've got it here. This is the best. I've got it. Yep, I know it. And so begin to, once you do that, you'll then not only be able to pick yourself up, you'll become less dependent on coping mechanisms to fill and buffer the space. You know, that's oftentimes what a lot of defense mechanisms are. And part of that 
or, you know, other esteem is, is because you feel that it's better to invest in another than invest in yourself. Warren Buffett, invest in yourself. Plato, know thyself. I mean, these were written on the temples, you know, centuries ago when you would walk in. There is value to this. I hope you are able to receive this message and able to incorporate, digest, and really experiment with what this feels like. Write it out a thousand times. I value my, myself. I value myself. You remember back in the day, if you had to learn your handwriting and learn the alphabet and practice it again and again so you got it right, you need to get this one right. You need to go back. If this was something you should have learned at age five, at age two, you know, at age seven, you know, but you missed that lesson, let's get it now. Let's really do it. Do the work. If you feel like you're a kid with a crayon, perfect. You are, this, you have to feel uncomfortable for the growth. You have to kind of get into that childlike, I am lovable. I am, I value myself. Write it out a thousand times. Let that kinesthet, you know, kinesthetically sink in. It's a physiological situation. It's not just in the mind, intellectualized, but where, where you own it, where you are it. You have, you know, unconscious competence here you know if you are in other esteem you know and you're living by that you are unconsciously incompetent meaning you didn't know that you were not valuing yourself then you go through the stages where you become consciously incompetent like you know what i'm aware that there's something that needs to change up and i don't quite know what it is and then you change to the next stage which is becoming um, consciously competent, which means you're doing the work. You're writing out, I am a person of value. I value myself. You're doing the, the affirmations. You are reciting this a thousand times. You are writing it a thousand times. You are speaking it out loud a thousand times. This is called reconditioning and reprogramming your you know, internal subconscious, which is the most powerful aspect of your personality is deep in that subconscious. You need to retrain just like someone who is going to college or a doctor who is learning his chemistry. You need to literally learn this. You need to get a notebook. You need to get a nice pen. You need to get some flashcards. You need to write this down. You need to read it. You need to say it. This is becoming on the road to consciously competent. And as you do it, you will feel it. You need to feel it to see it. You need to feel it to manifest it. You need to feel it to be it. Then you're about the being. Then you become unconsciously competent, which means you've done the work. You've done the writing. You've done the flashcards. You've done the astromations. I call them astromations, not just affirmations. Because you need to understand that words are law. Your word is law and thoughts are things. When you make these proclamations, you move providence. You move the universal energy. You begin to attract that which you are. You begin to draw to you the people who are an energetic match to that self-value. So do you understand now if you have felt that you have constantly been attracting people who are abusers, it's because deep inside you are feeling that, you know, you're feeling that low self-esteem. So you become an energetic match towards that disrespect. When you begin to value self and develop self-esteem, then you become an energetic match towards people who will treat you and relate to you on that level and everything will feel a whole lot better. You won't feel snagged. You won't be plagued with bouts of depression, bouts of this anger. You know, you need to detach and cut the ties with that people pleasing and, and those people. We talk about the power of going no contact. You know, you really do need to own this change within yourself so it can become functioning and who you are. And ultimately, the main thing and most important is 
who you become, who you become. If you're surrounding yourself with people who don't allow you to become a person of self-esteem and valuing of self, you got to get a new group. You got to get a new posse. You got to get a new scene. You got to bounce. You got to roll. You got to exit stage left. You got to go another route. You got to go the back roads. You got to go the mainstream. You got to, you got to reach it out somewhere else. You need to go your feet. You got to put on your running shoes. You need to hit the ground running. You need to go. You don't need to need to say bye. You know, actions will speak louder than words. You just got to go. You got to put the fire on, put the heat on, you know, put the pedal to the metal. You got it. You just got to do it. You know it. Stop living in denial. Forget about the stigma. Forget about people's hurt feelings. You know, um, things will come around and will come together. You don't need to live the facade. You don't need to do the performance for others. You don't need to live a lie. You don't need to live unhappiness. And the, the important thing and the important distinguishing thing is that oftentimes people fake it, you know, um, and they, in other words, they put on a happy face and they don't feel happy. They might work in a job that they dislike. They feel unhappy. They have to put on a performance. They don't want to be whatever it is that they're doing. They don't want to be a doctor. They want to be a carpenter. They don't want to be a carpenter. They want to be a doctor, etc. So it's honoring who you truly are. And to get that and to know yourself and to be able to manifest and live in that life of vision and become, you know, even better than and have life become even better than it is right now is to understand that that needs to happen, that that transformation, that alchemy needs to change from within it's you need to pull back you know stop you know don't you know there's you know don't touch the merchandise don't touch the narcissist don't touch the psychopath you know step away from whatever you know step away from the cheetos bag step away from whatever it is that has you kind of on that negative cycle where you're you know not doing the right thing um, or in the right place in valuing yourself. You're withholding that experience from yourself for some reason. So, and make those changes. It will help you to feel fresh, new. It doesn't mean you have to spend a lot of money. You can get a recovery gift for every change that, you know, when you make that positive change, reward yourself. Even if it's a plant, a candle, um, a, 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 a painting, a nice meal, um, make it and assign the value of recovery gifts to give yourself the acknowledgement and validation that you're on the right path and you value yourself. Do the work, do the tools, writing it down, peace and harmony. I can skip that sta step. Okay, go ahead. So, you know, skip it. You won't have as you, you won't you you won't make the change then. You know, begin to get a timer and look and make check marks on a piece of paper for how many times you're you're overvaluing somebody else and undervaluing yourself. Make a check mark on a piece of paper. You know, I do do you have an entire book filled up of check marks for how many times you've done that? That should be a witness, you know, a revelation to yourself. Be able to reveal these things to you and see and have and just, you know, make the the um statement to yourself. I am having so many aha moments and this is awesome. Make and speak that into existence. I'm having so many miraculous aha moments. This is magnificent. I'm having so many miracles and positive messages arrive in my life. This is amazing. You know, begin to speak those things into existence. I am profoundly happy. I am at profound peace. I am at profound serenity. This is a beautiful moment. Begin to speak that into existence and do it over and over and over again. Just like a doctor needs to take many classes, you need to take many opportunities to study and reinforce and rememorize and relearn your magnificence. Even if you were at the hands of someone who did not, who failed at this task, you know, begin to say sayonara to these people. Adios, amigos, you know, happy life, happy day, happy day, happy life, adios. You know, you don't have to change, but you don't have to stay here. 
you know, don't uh, uh, obligate them because you've invested so much. I, I see how people have this emotional bank balance where, you know, they feel that they've invested so much. They might share a house, a car. You might need to get your own credit. You know, you might need to do some steps. You might need to get a job. You might need to get a part-time job. You might need to study. You might need to write. You might need to paint. You might need to cook. You might need to clear out the back. You might need to clear out the front. Just do it though. Play your videos, play your music. You know, make yourself comfortable. Wear very comfortable clothing. Be very, um, have compassion to yourself and have empathy for yourself. Instead, you know, all the enthusiasm that you have had for the narcissist or the psychopath, give that enthusiasm back to yourself. It's your buddy, Peace and Harmony with you here today. And I hope that these videos do help. Please share, please subscribe, and please donate for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support. Make it a commitment. Make it a priority. Make it your number one thing. Value yourself. Do the work. If you feel like a child, if you feel silly, I've never done this before, perfect. You're feeling the right thing. Get your tools. Write it out. Reinforce it. Listen to this video again if you need to. Keep on track. You will arrive. Have a beautiful day.